So the topic today is uh, solution to the strong CP problem. Uh, and uh, I will be focusing on uh, somewhat unconventional solution to the strong CP problem, which is called this parity solution. Uh, I will explain a little bit about uh, uh, other solutions as well. Uh, I think in my view, the one of the major motivations to go beyond the standard model is the existence of the um, strong CP problem. So uh, any good model that goes beyond the standard model, it would be nice to address this and uh, potentially solve this. So here is a rough outline. I will briefly review what the strong CP problem is. And I will summarize very briefly again, popular solution to the problem. And then I will focus on uh, the parity solution, which is based on left-right symmetric theories. So I will motivate the left-right symmetric theories and then show how it could potentially solve the strong CP problem. I will discuss in detail the uh, model building and phenomenology of this class of models. Then I will come to some of the experimental tests uh, it turns out that uh, these models uh, that I will discuss today uh, will have uh, vector-like fermions. That is one of the signature uh, predictions of this uh, class of models. Uh, I will talk about neutrino oscillation, which has some different uh, feature compared to the traditional CISO mechanism. Then I will also address some of the anomalies uh, that are around these days, uh, such as the W boson mass shift, uh, and uh, that is uh, measured by the CDF uh, collaboration recently, and uh, the potential non-unitarity of the Kobayashi Maskawa matrix, sometimes called the Kabibo anomaly. And uh, the, this uh, setup is uh, rather constrained. One cannot uh, take the model and uh, solve the strong CP problem and also explain uh, various other anomalies. I will explain why some of the other anomalies cannot be explained with the, within the context, but these two uh, fit very well with the uh, with the idea uh, of uh, left-right symmetry and solution to the strong CP problem. And then I will conclude. Okay, so here is a very brief uh, <clears throat> summary of what the strong CP problem is. Uh, the strong interactions appear to conserve parity symmetry as well as time reversal symmetry. This is unlike weak interaction, which uh, breaks both parity symmetry and time reversal symmetry. If both P and T, uh, if, uh, if uh, time reversal symmetry is uh, broken, uh, then uh, because of uh, conservation of CPT, uh, CP symmetry would be also broken. But in the strong interaction, CP symmetry seems to be uh, well preserved. However, if you look at the QCD Lagrangian, there is a source of uh, violation of uh, parity symmetry as well as time reversal symmetry, or equivalently CP symmetry. So here is the uh, QCD Lagrangian uh, with uh, one flavor of quark. Uh, so here is the field strength, this is a gluon field strength. So the kinetic energy of the gluon is the first term. And this term here, theta QCD times gluon field times the dual gluon field, this is uh, a term which would, if it remains in the Lagrangian, it will violate parity symmetry. It will also uh, violate CP symmetry. Uh, and then we have the uh, gauge interact, the kinetic uh, term for the quark field and a mass term for the quark field. And the mass term here has been written, it is in general complex. So that can be written in this fashion, a phase e to the i theta q times gamma phi. Now, if you look at this, uh, we can get rid of the, uh, of, whenever there is a phase in the Lagrangian, that is some signature of a CP violation. Uh, but the phases don't always remain after field redefinition. Uh, the phase in the quark mass term can be absorbed by a field rotation, e to the i. This is a chiral rotation of the quark field. And uh, with this, uh, by a, e to the i alpha gamma phi over two times the quark field. And one can, uh, if we do that, the theta q will go to theta q minus alpha. And one can choose alpha appropriately to get rid of the uh, quark mass phase if needed. However, 
the rotation that is needed to get rid of this is a chiral rotation. It has an anomaly associated with it. And this, uh, this term here, the second term, G times G2 uh, dual, uh, is actually something related to the anomaly coefficient. So when you get rid of the uh, phase of the quark mass term, it will appear in the Q theta QCD term. What happens is that theta QCD will go to theta QCD plus alpha. In such a way that this combination, theta QCD plus the phase of the quark mass term, it does not, it is invariant. And this turns out to be a physical parameter. Uh, so there is therefore a physical parameter in the QCD Lagrangian that violates time reversal symmetry as well as parity symmetry. If you look at uh, uh, multiple, this was for the case of a single flavor of quark field. One can generalize this to multiple uh, quark fields. And if you do that, uh, what happens is that the, the theta bar becomes the QCD part plus the argument of the determinant of the quark mass matrix. Okay. So this theta Q becomes uh, uh, the phase of the determinant of the quark, quark mass matrix. Let me see if I did get, oh, okay. Uh, this, uh, if the QCD Lagrangian has this physical parameter theta bar, uh, it would contribute to the electric dipole moment of the neutron. As you all know, the permanent electric dipole moment of elementary particles is a signal of uh, CP or time reversal uh, violation. And the neutron does not seem to have any uh, electric dipole moment. There, there, are, there have been um, concentrated experimental efforts to measure the, electron, uh, the neutron electric dipole moment. It has not seen anything. This is a strong indication that uh, uh, the strong interactions are conserving uh, time reversal and CP symmetry. So how does the neutron electric dipole moment arise in the presence of this uh, theta bar parameter? So I'll be talking about this theta bar, that's the physical parameter. Okay. Uh, so if uh, one can compute in presence of theta bar, uh, diagrams such as the one shown here, this is a neutron uh, converting into a proton and a pion and the pi on emits a photon. And uh, in presence of theta bar, uh, this has some imaginary component. And that leads to uh, electric dipole moment of the neutron. And it is estimated in chiral perturbation theory uh, to be uh, the expression given here. Uh, it is proportional to the electric charge. It is proportional to theta bar because that, that's the source of CP violation. GA is the uh, axial vector coupling of the nucleon. And C plus is some order one coefficient, which is, uh, uh, which is uh, obtained from chiral perturbation theory. And F pi is a pi on decay constant. It is also proportional to a parameter mu, which is this quantity, uh, mu md divided by mu plus md. And uh, this cap the cutoff scale here is provided by uh, the QCD scale, four pi times F pi. If you put in all these numbers, uh, we see that uh, a neutron it would have an electric dipole moment of order 10 to the minus 16 times this theta bar in units of E centimeter. Now, neutron electric dipole moment, there is an experimental limit on the neutron electric dipole moment, which is 10 to the minus 26 E centimeter. When you compare these two, we see that theta bar has to be less than 10 to the minus 10. Now, this causes a problem. Theta bar is a dimensionless parameter in the QCD Lagrangian. And uh, the, the puzzle is why is it that an order, well, a dimensionless parameter in the Lagrangian is uh, so tiny? That is the strong CP problem. Another way of stating is that why is QCD uh, CP conserving? Why is the neutron electric dipole moment so tiny? These are all related questions. One might uh, consider putting theta bar to zero uh, just to because it's, it breaks a certain symmetry. So if the symmetry of the Lagrangian is enhanced uh, by setting certain parameter to zero, that is a good explanation. But that is in this context, it is not a good explanation because uh, we have one Lagrangian, the standard model Lagrangian, which has weak interactions as well as strong interaction. And we know for sure that the weak interactions break the CP symmetry in, in some large way. The uh, Kobayashi-Maskawa phase 
in the CKM matrix is of order uh, order pi over three or something. So uh, on the one hand, you have an order one CP violation and then uh, in weak interaction and uh, the CP violation in strong interaction is allowed to be theta bar to be of order one. That would have been the most natural uh, scenario, but we know experimentally that it has to be less than 10 to the minus 10. So the neutron limit on the neutron electric dipole moment provides uh, us a well-defined problem of the standard model uh, Lagrangian, uh, which is the strong CP value. Okay. <clears throat> uh, if there are any questions, I welcome interruptions, and I will be happy to address it as we go along. Uh, okay. Let me move on. Uh, this is a summary of uh, popular solutions to the strong CP problem. Uh, I have listed three solutions here. Uh, one is the idea that uh, one of the quarks is, uh, the mass of one of the quarks is zero. And uh, the leading candidate is the lightest of all the quarks, which is the up quark. Uh, since theta bar is uh, equal to theta QCD plus this argument determinant of the quark mass matrix, uh, one can, if one of the quark masses is zero, uh, one can make a chiral rotation uh, to remove uh, remove theta bar entirely from the Lagrangian. So if experimentally it were consistent that the up quark mass is zero, then there would not have been a, a strong CP problem. And you can also see that from the previous slide, uh, see the mu parameter in the estimate of uh, neutron uh, electric dipole moment it is proportional to the light quark mass. If up quark mass is set to zero, there is no, um, no electric dipole moment. So it is manifestly shown in this, in this uh, chiral perturbation theory estimate of uh, neutron EDL. Okay, but uh, there is an unfortunate uh, uh, inconsistency with experimental data. Uh, up quark mass is not zero. It is measured to some value a few MeV. And this is uh, confirmed by precision lattice computation. So this solution, although theoretically it would have been an acceptable solution, it is not realized in nature. Okay, the most uh, popular solution to the strong CP problem is the pitchai queen symmetry and the resulting axion. What happens here is that this theta, uh, theta bar parameter is promoted to a dynamical field. So this dynamical field, which is a scalar field, has a potential. And when we minimize the potential, theta bar would be relaxed to zero in the ground state. That's the basic idea of the Pichekun symmetry solving the strong CP problem. So here, what one does is we assume uh, a global symmetry uh, called U1 Pichekun on the Lagrangian. This global symmetry is good everywhere, except for one thing. It has a QCD anomaly. So the anomaly uh, of the QCD interactions breaks the symmetry explicitly, but otherwise it is only spontaneously broken by the scalar field acquiring vacuum expectation value. Now, if the only source of uh, uh, breaking is the spontaneous breaking, uh, there would be a Goldstone boson, a Nambu Goldstone boson associated with a U1 symmetry breaking. And that would be exactly massless particle. However, the QCD anomaly actually uh, means that the symmetry is not exact. Uh, through the QCD anomaly, the axion will pick up a mass. And uh, all its interactions uh, can be expressed in terms of uh, this uh, effective Lagrangian. A here is the, is the axion field and uh, the associated uh, uh, decay constant. This is FA is the uh, associated axion decay constant, which is typically of order 10 to the 9, 10 to the 10 G. This is how the axion couples the gluon field. So this is uh, this is uh, led to a lot of interesting research, uh, and especially looking for a, a light particle. The mass of the axion would be of order milli electron volt or even smaller. Uh, the axion could potentially be a dark matter candidate. So there are many interesting things that uh, the, uh, that goes with the axion solution to the strong CP problem. Uh, axion has not been observed. There are also issues uh, about uh, having global symmetries, such as the Pichekun symmetries, because quantum gravity is expected to break uh, all global symmetries explicitly. And this uh, goes by the name 
axion quality problem. The axions uh, suffer something called the axion quality problem. Uh, in order for uh, axion to be a good solution, uh, the Planck suppressed or gravity induced uh, breaking of the pitch equin symmetry should be rather weak. Anyway, that's uh, apart, apart from that, uh, this is a very interesting solution. A, a lot has been uh, uh, done with the, uh, in the search for axion, studying the properties of the axioms and so on. That's not the focus of my talk. My uh, focus is the third solution, uh, which is the parity solution. I believe it is uh, it is somewhat underappreciated solution to the strong CP problem. If you look at it theoretically, it is on similar footing as the axion solution. Uh, the idea is that uh, since theta QCD is a parity odd operator, uh, if one can somehow impose parity on the whole Lagrangian and break it spontaneously, then that could potentially solve the strong CP problem without having the axion. So that is the remainder of uh, today's talk. Motivation for doing that and some of the, uh, the models that are built to explain this and some of the experimental consequences. Okay, so here is, uh, is a uh, broad brush outline of the parity solution to the strong CP problem. Imagine you have some underlying theory, which is some beyond the standard model theory. Uh, in that theory, parity is uh, a good symmetry and it is spontaneously broken. So because of parity symmetry, the QCD, theta QCD should be zero because it is a parity odd operator. The theta QCD is the coefficient of the uh, G, G dual term. Let me show that again. Uh, theta QCD is the coefficient of the G, G dual term, which is parity odd. So because, of, uh, because the theory is assumed to have uh, ex exact parity symmetry, theta QCD would be zero. Okay, that's the first condition. Now, imagine also that the quark mass matrix is Hermitian. This could be achieved, and I, I will show this in more detail. Uh, if, if it is Hermitian, also by parity symmetry, then theta bar is zero, because theta bar is a combination of theta QCD and uh, argument determinant of the uh, Quark mass matrix. Uh, where is that? Yeah. Theta bar is theta QCD plus argument determinant of the quark mass matrix. If quark mass matrix is Hermitian, uh, the determinant would be real, and therefore the argument determinant would be zero. Therefore, theta QCD is zero by parity symmetry. Argument determinant of the quark mass matrix is also zero because the mass matrix is Hermitian, again, due to parity symmetry. Okay, back to this. So this is the broad brush outline of the parity solution. Uh, now, so what this guarantees is that uh, theta bar is zero at tree level. It is, does not guarantee because parity symmetry is not a good symmetry. It has to be spontaneously broken. So through quantum corrections, theta bar will be induced. Now, potentially this uh, quantum corrections would be uh, small enough so that this induced value of theta bar is uh, consistent with the uh, constraint that arises from neutron electric dipole moment. Okay, so that's a general idea. So in order to impose parity as a good symmetry, uh, we have to modify the standard model so that parity can be well-defined. And the leading candidate for that are these left-right symmetric models. Uh, I will explain that in more detail. Uh, in these models, parity symmetry is exact. Uh, as the name suggests, uh, under left-right symmetry or un under left-right parity symmetry, the left-handed quark fields transform into right-handed quark field. And the field, the, there is also a scalar field denoted here as phi, which generates the mass matrix for the quark field. And the, uh, under parity symmetry, this phi goes to its uh, Hermitian conjugate. As a result, the Yukawa interactions which, I, which is written here, QL bar phi QR with the Y, uh, with the Yukawa matrix Y quark. Uh, if you impose parity symmetry, then it requires the YQ to be Hermitian, YQ equal to YQ dagger. I should point out that this is something that in order to impose this condition, you have to go beyond the standard model. 
in the standard model, there is no way to uh, impose the Yukawa coupling matrices of the uh, quarks to be Hermitian. Uh, even if we, uh, if we imposed it to be Hermitian at some level, at some scale, it is not going to be stable under renormalization because parity is explicitly broken in the standard model. But in this uh, left-right symmetric models where parity can be defined, this is what you get. The quark uh, Yukawa matrix is Hermitian. Now, uh, yeah, th that is not the condition that is needed. We need the quark mass matrix to be Hermitian in order to set theta bar to zero. The mass matrix of the quark is given by Yukawa matrix times the vacuum expectation value of the field, uh, which, uh, which is the equivalent of the, it contains the standard model Higgs field. <clears throat> It turns out, and I will again explain this uh, in a bit more detail, uh, if, uh, it turns out that the parity symmetry uh, makes the Yukawa coupling Hermitian, but it is not enough to make the vacuum expectation value to be real. What is needed to make the Hermitian quark mass matrix is to have Hermitian Yukawa matrix and real vacuum expectation values. This real vacuum expectation value is a challenge, so initial attempts, for example, this uh, idea was initially, uh, this is a, a long history. Mohapatra and Sanjana, which is a, a, a try to solve it this way using parity symmetry. And uh, they've realized that because of this issue that the vacuum expectation value tend to be complex, uh, they resorted to additional symmetry outside of parity uh, the, with the goal of making the vacuum expectation value real. Uh, and there were there was some uh, somewhat of a successful attempt, but not completely satisfactory. So it was uh, parity plus something else. Uh, but the, if you look at the theta bar term, it's really it's a parity odd operator. It would be nice to have parity alone as the solution to the strong CP strong CP problem. By the way, I should also say that I, I call here strong parity problem. Uh, it is just a historical coincidence that uh, we uh, we call it strong CP problem. Because uh, in the standard model, parity is kind of a maximally broken symmetry. CP is, at least in, in, in the development of the standard model, initially CP was thought to be a good symmetry. Uh, so uh, there is some intrinsic uh, thinking that uh, it is really a violation of CP symmetry that is a problem. But uh, since the theta bar breaks parity, uh, I could have also called it a strong parity problem. So in some of my slides, uh, instead of calling it strong parity, strong CP problem, I will indicate it as strong parity. That's what I have noted there. Okay. Uh, hello, sorry. Yeah. Uh, Professor Babu. Uh, yeah, I uh, I have a question. Um, so in the uh, left-right symmetry model, the uh, WR mass is much heavier than WL. And how does this affect the parity symmetry here? Yeah, well, this is a very good question. I will I will actually come back to that uh, specifically. I, I will have more detailed discussion of left right symmetry. But you're right that uh, in in nature we know parity is broken, right? So this means that uh, the in left right symmetric theory there are uh, uh, there are additional gauge bosons, and under parity symmetry the uh, usual W boson, the left handed W would be taken to right handed W. But because parity is broken in nature. The mass of the right-handed W has to be um, rather heavy, much heavier than the mass of left-handed W, so that weak interactions are, is, are ma maximally, maximally parity violating. And also there are direct limits from LHC experiments. The right-handed W of the standard left-right symmetric models have to be greater than about 40 EV from LHC data. Uh, now, this, is, uh, uh, this has some effect on uh, this part on the quantum corrections to, uh, in the induced value of theta bar. But it does not, uh, one can still define uh, because parity is broken uh, spontaneously, uh, one can still define the whole Lagrangian has this parity symmetry. So one can still solve, even though the right handed W bosons don't have the same mass as the left handed W boson, uh, well, one can define this symmetry. It's the, the crucial point is to be able to define the symmetry. Then if these uh, symmetries are defined, theta QCD is zero, right? Because, because uh, that is a parity or, uh, uh, or operate. And uh, the, the right-handed W will acquire a mass, 
which is very different from the left-handed W, but that doesn't spoil this solution. And I will show this explicitly. Okay. I think, uh, yeah. So this is, uh, I'm giving a little bit more detail now. Uh, this is a, a very uh, elementary introduction to the left right symmetric models. Uh, this is the, uh, this was not <laughs> proposed to solve the strong CP problem. This was, uh, you know, uh, when in the foundational paper by Lee and Yang, which proposed that uh, uh, weak interaction may be parity violating, they already were somewhat, uh, the authors were already somewhat uncomfortable with the fact that uh, if we take look at the mirror reflection of our universe, uh, it is different. That's what uh, parity violation is telling us. Uh, so in the Li Yang paper, they already uh, proposed the idea that uh, maybe there is some parity is not really a broken symmetry. Uh, their idea uh, in modern language, uh, they, their idea was to postulate uh, mirror uh, particles. So for proton, there would be a mirror proton. For neutron, there would be a mirror neutron. And that if, uh, if the world is duplicated and there is a mirror replica of the world, then one can still define parity symmetry. Uh, this was their idea to re uh, reconcile the, the, the feeling that if you look in the mirror, we should do something completely different. Uh, this was very uncomfortable to, the, to Lee and Yang. They proposed it. Uh, and uh, it turns out that uh, that would require a doubling of all the particles that we know. Uh, it is an interesting idea. I will not be discussing much about that idea at all. That is all, that's a different way of uh, recovering parity symmetry. Uh, and as far as I know, that does not solve the strong CP problem because there would be uh, a different color, SU3 color gauge uh, interaction for the mirror universe. But rather, uh, if you look at this structure, it is only the weak interaction uh, has been extended. Color is the uh, SU3 color of the standard model, but the weak uh, interaction sector is now SU2 left cross SU2 right. And the U1, instead of hypercharge, it is now identified as barrier number minus left or no. So these are the, the Pachi Salam, Mohapatra Pati, and uh, Mohapatra Sanyana, which they, they developed this idea. Uh, and uh, the idea the, is that, uh, uh, well, it's much more minimal compared to the, the Lee Yang idea of a mirror universe to recover parity invariance. Uh, well, if you look at the particle content, uh, uh, the only new, one new particle is introduced, which is the right-handed neutrino. All other particles are, say, right-handed quarks are doublets of SU2 right. Left-handed quarks are doublets of SU2 left. And same with left -hand. So they were forced to introduce a right-handed neutrino, which is actually a, a, a nice thing. It naturally leads to small neutrino masses through the CISO mechanism. Of course, initially they were not aware of the CISO mechanism, but this paper of Maupatra Sanyana, which actually showed that uh, uh, it is a natural framework to explain smallness of neutrino mass because it contains in it right-handed neutrino. Uh, uh, in order to just complete the multiple, in order to define parity, one has to have, uh, if, if you have a new L, uh, you must have a new one. So they were forced to have the right-hand neutrino. So then neutrino mass is not an optional thing. Uh, so well before neutrino masses were discovered, these theories predicted neutrino to have uh, finite non-zero mass. Okay. <clears throat> the, uh, in the, uh, in the, the, this is the, in the so-called uh, standard left-right theories, uh, two types of Higgs fields are used. This phi field is the one that uh, will generate quark masses and also charged lepton masses, uh, QL bar, QR, phi, that uh, type of interaction. And uh, this delta fields, uh, they generate Majorana mass to the neutrino, both to the right-handed neutrino and the left-handed neutrino. There are, I put it in a compact form, there is a right-handed triplet and a left-handed triplet. Uh, the left-handed triplet can lead to what is called type two seesaw mechanism. The right-handed triplet generates the right-handed neutrino Majorana mass, which is much higher compared to uh, the usual neutrino. So this theory contains uh, the type one seesaw embedded in it, as well as a combination of a type two seesaw, because parity symmetry requires uh, the right-handed triplet should be accompanied by a left-handed triplet. And I will show that uh, the parity transformation will take delta left to delta right it will take phi to phi dagger, as I already pointed out. Okay, that's what makes the Yukawa coupling of this uh, quarks as well as the leptons to be Hermitian. Okay, <clears throat> very good. Uh, 
So here is the, uh, in more detail, the parity transformation under parity symmetry, left-handed quads goes to right-handed quad, left-handed left turn goes to right-handed left turn, phi goes to phi dagger, delta, the left-handed triplet goes to right-handed triplet. And the gauge fields are given in more detail here. Uh, more interestingly, the left-handed W is transformed into right-handed W under parity, and right-handed W is transformed into left-handed W. And the sign factors are, well, this is uh, S mu is uh, plus one when the space-time index is zero. It is minus one if, the, if it is spatial like coordinate. So uh, now it is true that the right-handed W will acquire a mass much higher, much heavier compared to the left-handed W, but this symmetry still is there. And because of this symmetry, theta QCD can be set to zero. It is zero. I mean, if you have the symmetry, theta QCD has to be zero. And in addition, uh, the because of the same parity symmetry, we have a Hermitian Yukawa matrix. However, the vacuum expectation value of this, uh, this uh, phi field, which generates uh, uh, the quark masses, it cannot be made real. It turns out that uh, many people have studied this, uh, maybe some in, in the audience have studied it. Uh, it turns out that the Higgs potential for with these fields is rather rich. There are like uh, 20 terms. Every term is uh, real because of parity, except one term. And that one term is uh, listed here. It's a, a kind of a mixed scalar field, uh, phi tilde, phi dagger, delta, uh, delta dagger. This is the parity invariant term. And the coefficient is in general complex. So uh, because of this, once you minimize the potential, the, the uh, vacuum expectation value of the phi will be complex. So this spoils the simple parity solution in this version of left-right symmetry. Uh, the so parity solution is not quite enough to solve the strong CP problem. Okay, well, there's a good try, uh, but uh, it, we almost got there, but it was not quite sufficient. Okay, so uh, what do we do? Uh, the, this is also, there has been some effort to try to recover uh, uh, the solution in, uh, left, in the standard left right symmetric models. Uh, one idea is that if you have left-right symmetry and combine it with supersymmetry, in the uh, this this term here with the different fields involved with the, some fields and some conjugate fields, this is, such a term is not easily uh, generated in supersymmetry. So super, supersymmetry would have this term automatically zero. So that feature has been used. Uh, what happens in supersymmetry is that you need two of these uh, uh, these five fields. Uh, in order to, because uh, the only, well, you need to have two Yukawa couplings to generate the CK mixing analysis. Uh, in uh, non supersymmetry, you can choose phi and this Hermitian conjugate, that is enough, but in supersymmetry, that is not possible because the super potential has to be holomorphic. So people have uh, studied uh, multiple two Higgs fields, and uh, it turns out that the super potential, all the parameters are real in many instances. I list here many of the studies and I will kind of, sort of very quickly summarize the results here. And uh, uh, so this is something uh, something very, very general, I think. Uh, given two Hermitian Yukawa matrix, I mentioned that the, uh, there are two phi's and so there are two Yukawa coupling matrices. I can call them YU and YD. Now, given two Yukawa coupling matrices, we can try to make a flavor invariant which is a singlet under the flavor symmetry. These are three by three matrices, right? You, so you have to take trace of these products of this uh, matrix in order to make a flavor singlet. Uh, you can, uh, one can see after a little bit of uh, uh, playing around, you will see that uh, uh, the combination that is complex will have this four, 12 such coupling, yu squared yd for yu for yd squared. This is the lowest order term that is allowed to be complex. Uh, so that's actually interesting because uh, yeah, this means that if in these supersymmetric models, uh, if only source of uh, complex parameters are these Hermitian matrices of YU and YD, it is very likely that the theta bar parameter will be very, very tiny. And indeed, uh, this has been checked in this, uh, I think in the model that uh, we studied, uh, this uh, this is again supersymmetric model. 
this uh, coefficient C12, it arises at some for loop level. And uh, the theta bar estimate is uh, something of order 10 to the minus 27. Uh, in supersymmetry, there is a tangent beta. It could be big, like 10. But still, it is well below the experimentally required value. This is uh, this argument is very similar to uh, the an argument. Ellis is spelled wrong. Sorry, Ellis and Gaillard, uh, who studied the induced value of uh, theta bar in the standard model. They pointed. They found that, uh, of course, in the standard model, the Yukawa couplings are not Hermitian, but they found that the lowest order uh, where theta bar is induced is something like this, this uh, 12 powers of Yukawa coupling. But instead of yu or yd, you do yu dagger yd and yd dagger yd. Then uh, this is, uh, you replace this here, that is the lowest order where one would uh, generate uh, CP uh, th theta bar in the standard model. Uh, Hello? Yeah. Hello, I have one question. So. So because you introduce the supersymmetry, does the SUSI breaking will you know destroy this solution? You know, if we have a general SUSI breaking, we have the complex phase ah, in the green. Okay. You know. <clears throat> yeah, uh, you're right. So uh, you're saying that that's a very good point. So uh, in the supersymmetric models, uh, with this uh, two uh, Yukawa couplings of the phi field. Uh, the, the statement is that if there are only two Yukawa, Hermitian Yukawa matrices and all other are, others are real scalars, real scalar singlet, then this is the lowest order uh, theta bar uh, you can generate. But you're right that in supersymmetry, if you have a general supersymmetry breaking, uh, then there could be a flavor structure associated with it. And if those uh, flavor structure deviate from the flavor structure in the Yukawa couplings, then uh, there could be uh, there could be additional contributions. So this estimate is no longer true. In fact, in this paper, we had done that estimate. It actually becomes much bigger. It could be of order 10 to the minus 10, but it's still suppressed. Uh, it is suppressed. Uh, this estimate, I would say, is the uh, supersymmetry with some universal, uh, you, uh, the, the supergravity -like type boundary condition. This will be true in supergravity-based supersymmetry brain. But in gen for general supersymmetry breaking, this could be much bigger. I agree. Okay, okay thank you. Uh, so for if some, uh, this is also true for the standard model. If for some reason, if the phase of the quark mass matrix was very small, zero for whatever reason, which we don't know, then uh, the induced value would be quite small. It has to arise at some seven loop diagram. But of course, that, that's not, uh, it doesn't solve the strong CP problem. Standard model, uh, the statement is that if uh, if for some reason theta bar was zero to begin with, it will stay that way. <clears throat> okay, so uh, in the remainder uh, of uh, most of the talk, I will show that parity symmetry alone without uh, relying on discrete symmetries or, or supersymmetry, it can solve the uh, strong CP problem. The key point of this idea is that uh, we go easy on the Higgs sector. Remember in the standard left-right symmetry, there were several Higgs fields that made the vacuum expectation value complex. Uh, but if you can construct a class of left-right symmetric models where you have only a doublet uh, Higgs field, one for SU to left, one for SU to right, then by gauge rotation, the fields, uh, the vacuum expectation value can be made real, okay? Uh, in that case, uh, without any loss of generality, the vacuum expectation values are all real. However, this uh, causes a little bit of a difficulty because this uh, left-handed doublet and right-handed doublet cannot generate the quark mass. That is achieved by introducing a vector-like fermion. The standard uh, model fermions can mix with uh, this vector-like fermions through this uh, left-handed doublet and right-handed doublet. Uh, and uh, so what happens in, in this class of models is that uh, all the fermions, like uh, quarks, charge lepton, they will acquire mass through a seesaw-like mechanism. This has been studied by Davidson and Valley uh, in 1987. They call it universal seesaw. That is, every particle is getting its mass through a seesaw mechanism. Uh, now, we have to still have uh, the, the vacuum expectation value of the left-handed doublet should be much smaller compared to the vacuum expectation value of the right-handed doublet, so that the WR is much heavier than WL. 
that, that is needed for consistent phenomenology. Uh, and this can be achieved by, in the Higgs potential, we can softly break this parity symmetry in the mass term for chi L and chi R. Then that doesn't introduce any, any divergence anywhere in the theta bar. So this provides a good setup where strong, strong parity problem can be solved. This was uh, initially suggested by Mohapatra and me uh, in this context uh, some years ago, but recently there have been a lot of activity on this idea. Uh, and I want to kind of uh, summarize them. So this is a, uh, so this is not the traditional left-right symmetric model. It is the left-right symmetric model with this universal seesaw. The gauge symmetry is uh, as in the left-right model. You have SU2 left cross SU2 right cross U1. And uh, uh, these are motivated on several grounds. First of all, parity violation is explained as of spontaneous origin. Because uh, it is, uh, it's going to give us a, a seesaw mechanism for quarks, the Yukawa couplings are not as widespread. In the standard model, the Yukawa couplings uh, range from one to 10 to the minus six. But uh, if you know the seesaw formula, you know the Yukawa couplings in a seesaw mechanism, it can go from one to 10 to the minus three. So there is a little bit of a, uh, the spread is not that so much. And uh, as in the standard left right, it requires the existence of right handed neutrino and therefore neutrino mass. And as I will show, uh, it, is, it has a solution to parity, uh, the strong CP problem. And it turns out that it can provide naturally light Dirac neutrino. I will say a little bit more about it. And there may be some possible relevance to experimental anomalies. Uh, I will talk a little bit more. So I already gave some references. Uh, the universal seesaw is 87. Uh, uh, Hershaw Gang and I actually pointed out soon after this uh, idea was proposed that neutrinos may be Dirac particles. And uh, this was kind of forgotten, but until recently, uh, uh, Gang and uh, my previous student, uh, Ming Xian Su and Anil Tapai, we looked at it in this neutrino oscillations uh, and we showed that the Dirac neutrinos that arise from here actually fit the neutrino oscillation data well. I'll summarize that result. Uh, and I already talked about the strong CP solution. Some of the anomaly, anomalies were suggested to be explained by this uh, in this setup. Uh, this group, the uh, Berkeley group had suggest, uh, studied this with the purely spontaneous parity breaking without even having the uh, soft breaking of parity. This requires uh, I will not talk much about it, but it's exactly the same setup, except that uh, the right-handed breaking scale has to be rather heavy. Flavor constraints have been studied by this, the, the Santa Barbara group. And uh, more recently, there has been a study by Harigaya and Wang on baryogenesis in these models. And I will finally talk about uh, the anomalies with my student, De Cruz, uh, and I are coming out with a paper soon. So this is a general setup. So the setup is something like this. Uh, the gauge group is the standard left right. All the fermions are as I already discussed. But then we introduce, this model introduces this uh, vector-like fermion. This is P corresponds to up type fermion. So the up quark mixes with this P, down quark mixes with N, and charged lepton mixes with E. And this mixing occurs through this, uh, the Higgs factor is very simple. There is a left-handed doublet and right-handed and their vacuum expectation values are real. So this mixing occurs, let's say QL bar, uh, uh, let's say take, take uh, NR, QL bar, NR, chi L. That is one of the allowed uh, interactions. And I have written down here, QL bar, chi L, N, QR bar, chi R, N. And these coefficients are exactly the same because of parity symmetry. Because under parity, QL goes to QR, chi L goes to chi R, therefore the coefficients have to be exactly the same. And then this vector-like fermions can have bare masses that are given here. And these bare masses have to be Hermitian matrices because under parity symmetry, uh, the left-handed fermion goes to right-handed fermion. Therefore, that makes this bare mass matrix to be Hermitian. So the full uh, mass matrix for any sec say up quark sector is given by this kind of a seesaw matrix. And uh, by the diagonalization of that, the ordinary fermions will get some uh, L mass given by the seesaw formula. And more importantly, because it is Y here and Y dagger there, 
and the vacuum expectation values are real, uh, if you look at the determinant of this mass matrix, it is real. That means that at tree level, theta bar is, has to be zero. Argument determinant of mu, md is zero. Therefore, theta bar is zero at tree level. Now, theta bar will be induced at loop level. So we have to, because the experimental constraint is quite severe, we have to make sure that the induced theta bar is uh, sufficiently small. And uh, that has been studied vanishing of theta bar. It turns out that in this setup, the one loop correction to theta bar is exactly zero. And uh, this is the calculation that is shown. We, I can write the up quark mass matrix as the tree level matrix times one plus some correction matrix. And this uh, correction matrix, every entry, uh, every block is corrected. That is shown here. And uh, one can go ahead and uh, compute the induced value of uh, theta bar, the formula is given at the bottom, bottom of this slide. And these are the one loop diagrams. There are gauge boson exchanges uh, involving the left handed W, right handed W. There are Higgs boson exchanges. The, uh, this is the B minus L gauge boson. Actually, it turns out that every diagram separately gives zero contribution to theta bar at one loop level. This is very interesting because the theta bar is then going to be. Uh, really suffered by some two loop factor. And uh, we estimated the two loop induced theta bar, it comes out of order 10 to the minus 11. This is, a, I think it's a very nice solution to the strong CP problem. Uh, I should point out that this the cancellation of theta bar at one loop or, or the vanishing of theta bar at one loop, it is not shared by another class of models called the uh, Nelson bar model, which is similar idea except that uh, instead of parity, they use CP symmetry. If you have spontaneously broken CP symmetry, one can suppress theta bar, but typically one would get uh, theta bar induced at one loop level. And uh, unless you tune parameters uh, appropriately, uh, the theta bar less than 10 to the minus 10 is uh, relatively hard to achieve there. But in the uh, model I presented, it is uh, pretty, uh, pretty easy to get it because all the one loop diagrams are give, uh, the, it's the power of parity. Parity breaking is this diagram, remember that it originated from parity invariant theory. Okay, this is a, uh, a side comment. The particle content that uh, uh, is uh, used in this uh, universal FISA mechanism, they actually can be embedded into a unified theory based on SU5 left cross SU5 right. Uh, the idea here is that all the left-handed fermions are multiplex of SU5 left, and all the right-handed fermions are multiplex of an SU5 right. Uh, if in this setup, uh, the, the number of particles is exactly fitting to SU5 left cross SU5 right. Uh, you see that, uh, yeah, there is a new right, you see, the, SU5 right contains a multiplet, which has a right hand neutrino. Uh, even so, there need not be a uh, seesaw mechanism. The neutrino could remain at the Dirac particles. And the masses will arise only at uh, some two loop level, as I will show. So this is an interesting scenario where uh, the neutrino masses uh, uh, are Dirac of the Dirac type, but also still very suppressed. And this just comes, from, comes out from the uh, the gauge structure, but, uh, it was not something required, but uh, we, uh, the, the theory was motivated by solving, by introducing parity symmetry uh, and also to solve the strong CP problem. But uh, as an outcome, it provides us uh, for free, uh, very tiny uh, new Dirac neutrino. So <clears throat> let's see, I may have to hurry up a little bit, but uh, this is a very general overview uh, of uh, neutrinos are, uh, very important, there are major experimental efforts going on to study the properties of neutrinos. This is a roadmap. We know a lot about neutrinos, about their masses, the oscillations, but we have many things that we don't know. For example, whether they are Dirac or Majorana is unknown. If it is Majorana, that would lead to neutrino of double barrier decay, which is connected to leptogenesis. We don't know, uh, the uh, Dirac neutrinos don't lead directly to double neutrino left double barrier decay. That's one way to distinguish. We don't know the scale at which neutrino mass are generated. It could be a very high scale, could be a weak scale, could be electron volt scale. 
we have no idea. These are uh, uh, experiments will currently going uh, ongoing experiments and also lighter experiments could provide us more deeper understanding of this. At the moment, we don't know the origin of neutrino mass or the, also the nature of the particle itself. So this is somewhat uh, unconventional. The Dirac neutrino models are okay uh, from phenomenology. Uh, you might say that, uh, the neutrino oscillation cannot distinguish a Dirac uh, neutrino from Majorana neutrino. You might think that uh, what about spin flip transitions in early universe cosmology, et cetera, uh, wouldn't that disfavor a Dirac neutrino because uh, it has a sterile component? But that is not true because the spin flip transitions will go like the rate will go like m of mass of the neutrino over the energy squared. So this is highly suppressed. Uh, if it is a Dirac particle, it would be nice to understand why the mass is small. And there exists uh, Dirac neutrino mass models, and I will I will jump right into. Uh, let me skip this. Yeah, right, in, right into this model that we are discussing. So this left-right symmetric model has a simple Higgs sector, uh, left-handed doublet and right-handed doublet. With such a simple Higgs sector, it turns out that uh, uh, the mass uh, masses uh, there is no mixed mass term between WL and W1. There is no mixing between WL plus and W1 at tree level. However, uh, through loop level, left-handed W will mix with right-handed W, and the diagram is shown here. And if we insert it into this diagram on the left, one would generate at two loop level a, a Dirac neutrino. Because it is a two loop diagram, magnitude is highly suppressed. And as I already said, there is no seesaw for the Dirac neutrino with the spectrum that uh, uh, is suggested by this theory. Now, recently, uh, we looked at the flavor structure uh, of this and uh, to see whether it is. Uh, consistent with neutrino oscillation data. And uh, this is the work with uh, Xiaogang, Mingxian, and uh, Anil that we wrote recently. And uh, so the challenge there was to evaluate this two-loop diagram. For evaluating the two-loop diagram, we had to put this Ws to be off shell. And that uh, is actually, we were able to do it. Uh, and uh, this is the details of uh, the two-loop evaluation. And the summary is that this is our best fit to the neutrino oscillation data in the two-loop Dirac mass model. Uh, in the, there are about 10 parameters to fit oscillation data and the charged lepton masses. And uh, so there is enough freedom. Uh, it admits both normal ordering and inverted ordering of neutrino masses. The CP phase, the Dirac CP phase is unconstrained. The scale of left-right symmetry also is not really constrained. It, uh, it is really, the Dirac mass is a, uh, it's a coefficient of a dimension four operator. So it does not decouple if you made the mass of right-handed W very heavy. So unfortunately, we cannot pinpoint what the mass of a right-handed W should be from neutrino oscillation data. But otherwise it is all, it's all good. Now, one way to test the idea that uh, neutrino of uh, arising from this kind of theory uh, is a Dirac particle is through the cosmological parameter N effective. It turns out that Dirac neutrinos will shift N effective by this number, 0.14. This 0.14 comes from, uh, this is the expression, there is a G effective, the number of light degrees of freedom in thermal equilibrium. 7 8 is due to fermion, the, the 2 is for spin, there are three right-handed neutrinos that comes, to, comes out to this much. Currently, uh, Planck uh, satellite data uh, puts a limit of N effective. Uh, it cannot be more than, at uh, one sigma, it cannot be more than 3.2 or so. Uh, and uh, these right-handed neutrinos were in thermal equilibrium through the right-handed gauge boson interactions. And they decouple, uh, the right-handed neutrino will decouple from the thermal plasma around 400 MeV or so for low right-handed W mass. And using this, one can determine that delta N effective predicted by this theory. And that is shown here. Uh, so the N, uh, this is the decoupling, uh, new R decoupling temperature. And on the top, there is a WR mass. This is the new R decoupling temperature the, from the formula I just showed you. And already we see that uh, the plant data uh, puts a lower limit of about 7 TV on the right-handed W mass. It is, which is a little bit stronger than LHC limit of, of a 4 TeV on the WR mass. 
But uh, more interestingly, in the near future, there are two experiments, the South Pole Telescope and the CMB Stage 4 experiments are supposed to pinpoint an effective to a few percent level. And uh, since the deviation is predicted to be 0.14, there is a good chance that uh, this could either uh, confirm the idea that neutrinos are Dirac particles or exclude this idea. Okay, I, let me, maybe because of short of time, uh, the idea that uh, uh, neutrinos could also be pseudo Dirac particles. I will, uh, it is the, uh, pseudo Dirac particles are, are like Dirac particles, but fundamentally they are Majorana particles. The off diagonal entries dominate over the diagonal entries in the seesaw matrix. Uh, so this has been studied by various groups uh, and uh, uh, there are also uh, experimental constraints from solar neutrino, for example, the mass splitting between the active species and uh, sterile species should be less than 10 to the minus 12 electron volt squared from solar data. And this, uh, whenever you have a Dirac neutrino, there, uh, once you include Planck suppressed operator, such as this, there is a good chance that it could be a pseudo Dirac formula. Uh, and uh, this idea could be tested in uh, very high energy um, astrophysical neutrinos at ice cube. In fact, uh, we have an ongoing uh, analysis with the Harvard group uh, where we are studying this in more detail. Here, what, I, what is shown here is that the traditional uh, one to zero composition, that, that is the pion decay produced of neutrino, it will have uh, two muon neutrinos for every electron neutrino. That is just the flavor composition. In the standard Dirac neutrino hypothesis, after oscillation, if they travel megaparsec uh, of uh, distance, uh, this uh, after the neutrino oscillation that takes place, they will become equal mixtures. However, if it, uh, they are pseudo Dirac, uh, for some range of this mass splitting, uh, the, the uh, this uh, one third, one third, one third will deviate by uh, some uh, some factor given by this expression. So that is being currently under study. And uh, this, uh, if you know the source of the ultra high energy neutrino, we can actually test the uh, the uh, the hypothesis that the neutrinos could be pseudo Dirac neutrinos. Okay. The last point. Uh, do I get another five minutes? Or so? Yeah, yeah, please go ahead. No problem. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I wanted to uh, say some relevant, uh, talk a little bit about the relevance to uh, uh, the experimental anomalies. As uh, we all know, there are many anomalies. Uh, some of them could be addressed in this uh, context. There is the Mion G minus two, there are BDK anomalies, RK, uh, RD, there is a W boson mass shift, there's something called Kabibo anomaly. Uh, but okay, we have a setup. We cannot change the setup very, very much because uh, the setup uh, is uh, constructed to solve the strong CP problem. If we add more, many more particles, the solution may be lost. So not all anomalies can be explained in this context. For example, we tried to explain the muon G minus two anomaly. It is very hard to explain it in this context. Uh, so um, so uh, what we found was that similarly, RK and RK star is very difficult to explain within, within this context. We found that the last two listed here, the shift in the W boson mass and the so-called Kabibo anomaly actually fit rather well within this model. And let me explain that. Uh, the Kabibo anomaly is the, is the statement that if you take the length of the first row of the CKM matrix, it doesn't quite add up to one. There is a three sigma discrepancy from one. So this could be an indication that uh, there is some additional fermion which mixes with the up quark or the down quark. But, uh, and in fact, it happens naturally within the context that uh, I was describing because we needed the uh, uh, extra vector-like quark. It is also true for the first column. It doesn't quite add up to one. So together this is called the Kabibo anomaly. Uh, so if I take, for example, the up quark, uh, the ordinary up quark mixed with some vector-like quark, actually we cannot explain that. In, in, in the standard model, if we had a motivation for that, this could explain the anomaly. But because of parity, uh, this coupling YU and this YU star are exactly the same because of parity. And uh, then this, YU, uh, this mixing has to be extremely tiny to be proportional to the up quark mass. So this cannot explain in a parity symmetric theory. Uh, the, the Kabibo anomaly. 
However, uh, you know, we, can, we have uh, three flavors of this heavy quark. So I can mix up quark with two vector-like up quarks. That can be shown, it is a, it's a flavor structure where one up quark mixes with two heavy quarks. And uh, if I choose this kind of a pattern, uh, the determinant is zero, so it doesn't lead to any up quark mass. So I can get uh, uh, the mixing between the ordinary up quark and the vector like quark is given by this ratio, yu kappa l over one of the heavy masses. And uh, uh, so th that is actually a consistent way of explaining it. So uh, for simplicity here, I assume that the CKM mixing comes entirely from down quark. Then you go, go through this uh, diagonalization and you will see that uh, I have up charm and top and these two heavy quarks and DS and V and together they form a five by three CK matrix. And uh, the first row and first column are modified. And uh, you don't, if you sum up the, this CL stand for the cosine of the mixing angle of the up quark with one of the vector-like quarks. And you see that the sum of the, uh, the length of the first row is not long, no longer one. It is uh, uh, sine squared of the mixing angle. And when the sine squared is about uh, well, 4%, it can explain the Kabibo anomaly. And this is consistent. Uh, yeah, when sine is uh, 0.038, then uh, anomaly can be explained. And in order to get that to, to be 4% uh, or so, the vector like one of the vector like quarks have to have mass below 5D. So that's a prediction. If Kabibo anomaly stays within the context, the, this one of the vector like quarks have to be below 5D. And here I've shown that uh, you know once the uh, up quark mixes with vector like up quark, it can change uh, the Z uh, decay, decay width into up quark. The hadronic Z decay width, it will actually the coupling is modified by this extra term. Uh, but we check that uh, the Z width is uh, it shifts by one MeV. Current experimental limit on hadronic Z width is about 2.3 MeV, so it is consistent. And there are no flavor changing uh, in flavor change induced by the Z boson at tree level. And KK bar mixing, there are some contribution from loop level box diagrams, but they are at order of magnitude below uh, experimental limit. And it's an interesting possibility that. Uh, uh, one can have dihex production through T-channel exchange of this vector-like quark. This is something there have been some studies, but it is something that will be quite interesting to check in connection with the Kabibo anomaly. It has not been done, but we are thinking about it. Uh, and the last point is that we can also explain the W boson mass shift. Uh, as uh, you all have heard, uh, CDF recently reported a new measurement of W boson mass which is seven sigma away from standard model prediction. If you have vector-like quarks, uh, it can modify the oblique electroweak precision parameter, T, S, and U. This occurs in, the, in this model, the quark CISO model. Uh, one might think that the top mixes with a top partner. With the, if the mixing angle is a 0.15, that would be okay to explain the W mass shift. Uh, however, that is not consistent because then that would lead to very heavy top mass. Uh, because uh, because of parity symmetry, the top mass uh, actually requires the mixing angle to be much smaller than 0.15. Uh, the source of uh, the uh, custodial SU2 violation is a mixing of top left with uh, this vector-like up quark. Uh, this is SU2 doublet, this is SU2 singlet, so this breaks SU2 uh, custodial symmetry. And uh, so the trick is, again, we have uh, three different uh, uh, heavy quarks. So if top mixes with two of these guys, then top mass is not a constraint. And the T parameter uh, is uh, approximately given in some limit. This is a lengthier expression, but we have done it numerically, but in a simplified version, T parameter is uh, given by this. And uh, this can explain the uh, W boson mass shift. So in this plot, uh, the mixing angle of the top with the heavy top is plotted as a function of uh, <laughs> as a function of the oblique parameter, T, S, and U. It turns out that the T parameter is a bigger contribution to the W mass. And here, the mass of the vector-like top is plotted. And uh, we, if you go below about three or four TV, the shift becomes too small. And that is shown here. The W mass boson mass shift as a function of the vector-like top and the mixing angle. 
the vector like top is excluded below about 1.6 TV or so from direct searching. But you see that there is a uh, there is an allowed region when the mass is below about 4 TeV. And then VTV measurement determines uh, that this mixing cannot be more than about 0.17 or so. So there is an allowed region uh, which is consistent with the Kabibo anomaly as well as the W boson mass shift. So these are uh, the, the strong CP solution itself doesn't tell us what the right handed W scale is. Uh, or the vector-like fermion scale. But if one of the anomalies is true, and if it stays, then we can say that the right-handed W has to be below about 10 TeV, and uh, the masses of the vector-like fermion should be below 5 TeV or so. So that brings to my conclusion. Strong CP problem is a strong indication of physics beyond the standard model. Parity symmetric alone can solve the problem. This is an alternative to the axiom solution. BSM theory should be left-right symmetric so that parity can be defined. Models where parity alone can solve the strong CP problem have a variety of testable consequences. Generally speaking, a second Higgs field and vector-like fermions are characteristics of this theory. It allows for Dirac neutrinos, possibility of non-unitarity of CK matrix, modification of W boson mass. And finally, because this solution does not set theta bar to zero, like in the pichai quinn solution, uh, there is an induced value of theta bar that would, could contribute to measurable value of the neutron electric type of moment. So future experiments can, uh, can possibly tell us whether this is on the right track or not. Thank you all very much for your attention. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for this nice talk. So we can have several, like, uh, Questions. So, if you have questions, you can unmute yourself to ask uh, uh, directly, or you can uh, send a message in the chat box. So, I see that there are some chat boxes. Oh, okay. No, that's not a question. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah. That is about the slides. Oh, yeah, I will yeah, be so... sending uh, Yangcheng the slides of the talk. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. So I have a question about that. Like you mentioned that it's hard to explain the muon G minus two in this model. So can you explain a little bit more like what's the difficulty there? Yeah, sure. Uh, yeah, among these anomalies, uh, get the full screen. Yeah, uh, the muon G minus two, uh, what happens is that there are experimental limits on the masses of uh, Z, right-handed Z and right-handed W. The right-handed Z should be greater than about uh, five TV from direct LSC constraint, and right-handed W should be greater than about four TV. So if you, if you have any loop correction, uh, which includes uh, the, uh, the right-handed W or right-handed Z, it becomes too small. It's just a power suppressed by the uh, okay. experimental limit on right-handed W and right-handed C. Uh, so the best hope is to have uh, a scalar interaction. Uh, so because the uh, scalar sector is so simple, all we have is a standard model Higgs and a singlet uh, scalar, uh, which is the remnant of the SU2 outbreak. So we looked at... Uh, <clears throat> diagrams, one loop diagrams where uh, the <clears throat> left-handed Higgs doublet uh, mixes with the right-handed Higgs, uh, the leftover Higgs field. And uh, the parity symmetry tells us that uh, the relevant couplings are proportional to the muon mass. So even when uh, the new Higgs field, there is a single Higgs field in the theory, okay? Even when that single Higgs field is uh, the uh, below 100 GV, even then uh, the uh, muon G minus two comes out to be one order magnitude below what is needed. Okay. So the uh, it is unlike the standard left right symmetry. There are many new particles you can have. For example, double charge scalars uh, coupling to muon, they can uh, they can contribute to that. Here, the minimality of the Higgs sector uh, forces the muon G minus two to be rather suppressed. Okay, okay, good. And uh, I have another question about like, uh, you mentioned like uh, in the model, 
you calculate one loop question to the theta parameter right. and uh, at one uh, at one loop level all this uh, each diagram itself become zero so is there uh, like uh, under uh, like an explanation for that like a symmetry or something like that for this yeah so what happens is that uh, the uh, i think the symmetry is parity symmetry the, you, since uh, parity symmetry is uh, is there at the fundamental level uh, even uh, even when we evaluate these diagrams uh, the we have to take one any one of these diagrams right uh, and uh, uh, we are interested in we have to find the whole quark mass matrix from this diagram yeah. and uh, uh, that is not enough then i have to form a flavor invariant right like, because theta bar is a number it's a flavor singlet so i have to take take a trace of some matrix so what happens is that if I, if I have only a trace of the up quark uh, yukawa matrix uh, yukawa coupling then uh, you can see that uh, if I, on this one vertex i will put yu and the other vertex i will put yu dagger and in between i will put the mass matrix for the heavy quark, but the heavy quark mass matrix is Hermitian. Why, uh, so I have a trace of YU dagger, MU, YU. Okay, so that is real. Uh, and because of that, it is the, uh, th uh, the reason, reason for each of them separately being real is the, it's not a cancellation. It is when you make a flavor singlet that uh, the trace becomes real. Okay. You need to somehow okay. bring in different sectors. So if I compute the up quark mass matrix, I should bring in some down quark inside the loop. And that's not there at the one. It, it does exist at a higher loop. Okay, so that you will have some mismatch between different Yukawa couplings, different Yukawa coupling matrices. So yeah, but the quick answer is that uh, uh, if you evaluate these diagrams uh, and then take the trace, uh, the, the traces are all real at one loop. Good, thank you. Yeah, we have a, a, a question from audience. So, uh, Yang Hengzhen, yeah, please come into yourself. Yeah. Hi, hi, hi. Professor uh, Babu. Uh, yeah. ni yeah. Nice and interesting talk. And uh, it, it, uh, I am a experimentalist, so I'm not. Uh, I cannot follow all of those uh, theoretical details, but. Uh, uh, it's interesting to know that your uh, uh, theory can explain this uh, uh, W mass, a, no, uh, a normal anomaly W mass, and uh, some other uh, like the lactone flavor uh, universality anomaly, etc. So my question is that uh, can you use this? Uh, measured uh, the the w mass from the cdf experiment to constrain your free parameters and uh, give some kind of predictions on the other anomaly like yeah, this, so, the uh, rd star or or something else yeah thank you thank you this is a very good question uh yeah, sorry that uh, my talk was more theoretical, but I think it was still motivated by the experimental information that we have. <laughs> uh, so yeah, in answer to your question, uh, the uh, this plot here, uh, it is the, uh, uh, this is the allow, if you take the W boson mass measurement seriously, uh, and uh, try to interpret it within this context, uh, it requires, uh, the mixing to be, uh, there is a mixing parameter, which is the top yeah. part mixing with the vector-like uh, particle. Uh, that has to lie in this certain range between 0.16 and 0.1 or so. And uh, there is an upper limit on the uh, uh, mass of the vector-like part. It's about, uh, depending on whether you're allowing one sigma or two sigma, I think it can go uh, up to about 4 TV. So, right. okay, so the statement is that uh, one of the vector-like quarks that mixes with top quark should have a mass below uh, 4 TeV. This is all we can say from based on uh, the uh, the W boson mass measurement. Uh, now, if we combine it with the uh, the unitarity uh, measurement of the first row of the CKM matrix, uh, 
I think that also requires uh, one of the uh, vector like uh, a different vector like quark, mm -hmm. which is uh, uh, something mixing with a uh, down quark. It has to have a mass below about three TeV, uh, and it's uh, that mixing should be about four percent. The down quark mixing with uh, uh, with a vector like down quark should be at the level of 4% in order to explain that anomaly. Now, uh, so we have these uh, two pieces of, pieces of information and we, unfortunately we are with this, uh, we, uh, the statement is that uh, we cannot explain the uh, BDK anomaly RK and RK star. No, there is I just see. not enough, uh, enough uh, room within the model to explain RK and RK star. So yeah, that is unfortunate, but maybe, you know, uh, we can introduce new ingredient, but the philosophy was that we have a minimal model, we stick with it and, uh, and uh, explore what it, it predicts. So according to this theory, if this theory is right, the RK, RK star anomaly should, should disappear. And similarly, the muon G minus two anomaly should also disappear. Otherwise, uh, if it is established with uh, with a future experiment and also future lattice computation, uh, then I think uh, one has to go beyond the model that I presented here. Yeah, okay, thank you. Yeah, is there any other questions from the audience? Uh, I have a simple question. Sure. Yeah, please uh, go ahead, yeah. Yes. Uh, do you have a, a review paper like a physical reports or something else to uh, summarize all of this left right symmetric uh, model? Uh, okay, that's a very interesting question because uh, uh, you know we have been uh, thinking about it and uh, we noticed that there are several uh, review papers on uh, on the axion solution to the strong CP. But very few, actually, not at all, uh, not not at all, a, any review paper for this uh, parity solution or also CP, uh, the uh, CP solution to the strong CP problem. So, in fact, uh, yeah, unfortunately, I'm not aware of uh, any review paper. But I should say that, uh, in fact, I have a meeting with my collaborator Ravi Mohapatra uh, tomorrow uh, to we have been talking about uh, writing a review paper. <laughs> But okay, it is not, good. it is in the works. So and also, to... sorry, another question. Uh, does your Victor like quark uh, contains the uh, uh, color uh, degrees of freedom or? Yes, don't... yes, yeah. So the vector like quarks are exactly like ordinary quarks. Uh, they actually even mix with ordinary quarks. Uh, so they do have color, they are exactly okay. color triplet. Uh, it is vector like in the following sense. Uh, they, uh, I can write, uh, uh, their, their masses don't come from the Higgs interaction. Their masses are, you just, you can write it down in the Lagrangian. So uh, in principle, the mass could be much higher, much higher than uh, the weak, weak interaction scale, like 100 GeV. It could be 10 to the 10 GeV if I want, because it's and, not uh, coming from a uh, okay, uh, thank Higgs you. mechanism. However, if you have uh, something like this, the W mass is true, then the experiment will tell us that uh, at least some of the masses cannot be more than four TV or so. So in every respect, it is the color interactions identical to uh, the standard quarks. Their gluon interactions are identical to ordinary quarks. Okay, uh, the last uh, stupid question. Uh, the, how, how do you uh, wire, uh, break the parity? Uh, spontaneously, uh, just by yeah. the uh, heat difference between Higgs web or right. So the the, the I think I had it somewhere. Maybe I didn't export. I did not write down the potential, but uh, uh, yeah, I can I can expand on this uh, for one minute. Uh, yeah. So what happens? Uh, the uh, you have a we have a left-handed Higgs field and a right-handed Higgs field, and uh, uh, the we have to somehow arrange for the vacuum expectation value of uh, the left-handed Higgs field to be much smaller compared to the vacuum expectation value of the right-handed Higgs field. This can be done by writing a Higgs potential. Uh, if the Higgs potential is exactly parity symmetric, uh, what happens is that uh, the minimization will give uh, right-handed uh, Higgs getting a non-zero vacuum expectation value 
the left handed Higgs will get zero vacuum acquisition value. This is acceptable. Uh, this, is the, this is the idea that was developed by the Berkeley group. They say that if the uh, right-handed symmetry breaking scale is around 10 to the 11 GV, this is completely consistent with experimental data. Uh, the way we are adopting it is that we allow for a, a soft breaking uh, of parity symmetry. That means that the mass term for the chi L and chi R are slightly different. Then it will allow for the vacuum expectation values to be slightly different. Then, uh, then, uh, yeah, then it will it can be made uh, completely consistent. We want to realize this hierarchy. This kappa R should be much higher compared to kappa L. Okay, but uh, does this uh, way of uh, violating uh, parity uh, affect uh, Wafa witten theorem? I mean, it, uh, the latter says uh, this QCD uh, CP conserving. Uh, uh, QCD does not violate ice spin symmetry. Uh, will your uh, parity violation uh, inf influence the uh, QCD sector? I'm wondering. Oh, I see. That's an interesting question. Yeah, it's a Wafa Witten theorem as applied to this case. I have, I, yeah, it's a very excellent question. I haven't thought about it. <laughs> uh, but I think a quick uh, answer, which may not be exactly addressing your uh, question, is that so we have explicit, this will be the soft breaking is an explicit parity violation. So I'm not sure in the presence of explicit parity violation, the, the Wafa Witten uh, theorem is. Uh, uh, is applicable. I have to look it up. I'm not sure. I'm okay, not but uh, this may not uh, propagate into the strong interaction sector. Yeah, except through the theta bar parameter. I mean, this is affecting the parity invariance is affecting the theta bar parameter. So in that sense, it is uh, influencing the strong interaction sector. But uh, it is, I would say that uh, it is affecting through perturbative method. That is. Uh, we want we we are inducing this theta bar perturbatively, not by non-perturbative interactions. Okay, thank you very much. All right, thank you. <clears throat> yeah, so like uh, it's already late there, so so I think it's yeah. Let's thank the speakers again so for this nice talk, and uh, I hope. We can have in person meetings in the near yeah, future. Yeah, I hope so too. Yeah. Thank you very much for thank you everyone for uh, spending yeah. the early morning with me. It's a real pleasure to give this talk. Yeah, thank you. All right. <laughs>